Good morning, everybody. This is Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We don't say good morning for lives very much, <laughs> and I do that intentionally <laughs> because I'm usually not awake so early. Um, yeah, but we always do the Share, Create, and Inspire card class on the Wednesday that I do my in-person monthly classes, and I have those classes at 1 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And the the time that worked on the calendar to sneak this class in was 10 a.m. And so we've been doing this class at 10 a.m., you guys, since March. Yay! So that means we had March, we had April, May, June, July. This is our five-month anniversary for this class. Uh, and we're getting to that six-month mark. And they always say you need to do something for at least six months consistently before you decide, well, do you keep going with it or do you tweak it or what do you do with it? Uh, hi, Susan Bellamy. Hi, Randy Schultz. Hi, Sherry Everett. <clears throat> so my question for you guys that are watching this live or catching the replay, are you liking this class? Is it worthwhile to do? Is it inspiring? And is it making you create something? <laughs> so um, it's um, kind of like the opposite of... Uh, mystery night for me where I'm actually creating uh, a card that I don't know what I'm potentially doing. <laughs> so it's a little bit backwards for me. Hi, Jenna Helms. Uh, Sherry's really nervous. Okay. We're going to get through this together because this one makes me a little nervous too. Hi, Veronica. Veronica, I still have your June paper pumpkin waiting here with your name on it. We need to touch base about um, money. Hi, Pauline Landuit. Hi, Susan Bear. I want us to put a D in there because I know some Benerics, but it's Baronek, I think. Baronek. <laughs> Hello from Lakeshore. Yay. Uh, so, yes, this class makes me a little nervous too, Sherry, but oh, we don't have to be nervous. We're going to get through it. Um, the more mm. I. Uh, think about things the longer that this class is, I think. <laughs> so I was reading your instructions. So this class was the brainchild. Well, and before we before we do anything, you guys, I want to share with you what I'm drinking my coffee out of. Hi, Sherry Pyre. Hi, Darrell. Long time no talk. So you guys, I drink coffee usually in the morning um, and it helps make me wake me up. <laughs> the only thing that I'm addicted to is coffee because if I don't go, um, if I go without it for more than a day or two, I get that headache right here. So I got to work on, try to wean myself off of it, but I always need it. So hi Jennifer Summer. So, so I wanted to share with you guys, I actually, I pulled this mug out and I'm not going to put the camera down and turn it because it'll just spill it. <laughs> I learned, I'm like, I thought about that. So I wanted to share with you guys, I have my proud to be a bee happy stamper mug. I got to hold it like that. So uh, hi, Susan, warmly. I got my, my mug out. So um, it was Tyler's idea. Tyler's my boyfriend, for those who don't know me. Uh, Tyler's idea that I need to start um, working with my team. This was a couple years ago. He's like, you need to like, so I, in the Stampin' Up! world, you get ranked and I'm always trying to set goals and see where I can get and working hard to, you know, be ranked. Um, I went like one year I was in the like 127 and then I worked harder and I, I was like 97 and then the next year I worked a little harder and I was 50. Then I was 37 and last year, you guys, I was 20 and now I have a more aggressive goal. Yes, I do. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I do. <laughs> yeah, so along that path though of me trying to uh, do better for myself and achieve um, a higher number, uh, or I should actually say it's a lower number, uh, Tyler came up with the idea of, he's like, you should do something similar for your team. Uh, and so last, it, actually, I started it with two years ago. Um, and then his idea last year, because my idea was, I gave away Stampin' Up! product to the top 15 on the team. And he's like, people have all the stuff that they want and they can buy it. That's not really an incentive to to actually like work at something because you can buy it. Like every, If anybody can buy it, why do you want to work for it, right? So his idea was, so up in Nina, which is about 45 minutes from me, uh, there's a company called Sunset Hill and they make these pottery mugs. And it was his idea to have a custom mug made that had proud to be a Be Happy Stamper. And then the top 15 got that mug. And there are a few other key people that are very helpful um, and work their busy butts off, their busy bee butts off 
to help bring our classes to everybody. And so I reward some of my helpers with the, the mugs too that are year-long helpers that just never say no to me and us and you guys. Um, and so so this was the top 15 gift last year and I'm using it. I'm so excited. And you know, Tyler uses it actually more than I do. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is because the top 15, I'm so excited because I'm gonna share it because the top 15 idea or like Tyler's idea was to do a Yeti, you guys. So I had a custom made, and it's like the glare from the lights. Let's see if I get it closer. Um, this way. <laughs> there it is. And I can hold this this way, actually. So Tyler said, you should get a Yeti. So yeah, Tyler and I love Yetis, you guys. So we had the 14-ounce coffee mug made up, and we had it engraved with Be Happy Stampers. And so it doesn't say proud to be a Be Happy Stamper like our stickers have, but um, it has Be Happy Stampers, and that's because that looked nicer on the Yeti. So Yay! So I'm gonna have this in the background here as a little like, hey, it looks good for decoration. And just to, if anybody asks, I can share it. And so he's like, you need to get it on display. And then he's like, oh, he's always full of ideas, you guys. <laughs> he's like, you need to start thinking about what next year's, like, you know, like Stampin' Up! already um, announced the incentive trip for 2025. He's like, you need to announce what your top 15 gift is like right when the new year starts so that, that the team can start working towards some goals if they want to earn uh, something, right? It's not always going to be a mug. So yeah, so I thought I'd share that. Now I got to move my coffee out of the way though, because I don't want to spill it on anything. <laughs> so the yellow honeybee Yeti is so bright and fun. Yes, it's actually the color is called um, Alpine yellow, but we're going to call it honeybee yellow. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. All right, you guys, I'm, when I am not sure what I'm doing, I procrastinate a little bit. <laughs> if you guys don't know that about me, um, but what we're going to do is come over here and share with you what we're doing and how we got started really quick before we do this. Because in case anybody's new to this class, um, how did I come up with the name Be Honey Stampers? Okay, so Jenna asked a really good question. Thanks, Randy. I'm glad you guys like the gifts. Yay! <laughs> They're all, it's like usually Tyler. Tyler helps me spend the money <laughs> um, for the incentive gifts and the team gifts. Um, <clears throat> and Kelly, my cousin too, she's really good at that too. And speaking of that, I have, I just looked at my sticker here and I had a phone call from Sherry, Sherry Martin. Um, I have to make a note, Sherry. We talked last week. Um, when my team, when I have somebody new on my team signs up, um, they get a little sticker from me and I keep that here as a reminder. And so Sherry, um, Sherry needs a sticker. So yay. Um, if anybody on my team is, I tried to catch everybody up. So when I give team gifts at Christmas time or a gift halfway and somebody started beforehand, I always go back and retroactivate the gift and give the gift to anybody who earned it previously, just because I don't want people thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't get that. I would love it. And it's like, yep, you get it. Go for it. Hi, Maria Gilbertson. Um, so the Be Happy Stampers, long story short, it was probably the year 2016. If I had to peg it or put a date on it or a year on it, um, cause my be happy, or maybe it was even 2018. It could have been 18. Cause I looked back at the Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group for my team. It's called the be happy stampers team page. Right. And I looked at the date of creation and I feel like it was sometime in 2019 in January. And I, I remember, um, going to a Stampin' Up event and they said, if you're going to build a team, you need to have a team name, right. And come up with something that, um, is that, that you like, and that, you know, would be a good team representation. And I remember riding in the car with my mom. We were on our way to run an errand or we were driving somewhere on a trip. Like, because I always try to go on a trip with my mom once a year. And so we were, I feel like we were in the car driving on a, a medium term trip. It was like a two hour away trip to go somewhere. And I was like, mom, I need help. <laughs> of course, right? Hi, Mary Shriver. I need help. I need to come up with a team name. And I, because I was looking to grow my Stampin' Up um, career. And Oh, so we started thinking, well, what do you like? What do you like? Well, I love cats, you guys. I know I'm the, now I'm a crazy cat lady. I, I, I can officially say that, I think. <laughs> They're not in here now. Um, Tigger's taken a, a turn for liking to be in the house now, either supervising or making sure his stuff doesn't get wrecked. I don't know one of the two, or he's having fun with the kittens. I'm not sure, but he's in there now. Like he's happily content. He doesn't even like attempt to come out here with me. It's just like the tables have turned in the last week. He wants to hang out with them, which is good. I don't know if he wants to, or if he's um, like supervising, right? One of the two, but I like cats, right? And so but it's like, nah, I'm not gonna name a cat, a team after a cat. I need something more universal. And I remember like, I like turtles. Um, I have a turtle up here on my shelf. I like penguins. I have like a little penguin back there. 
Um, I like owls a lot. And so we were going trying to think of things that I really, I like. And I love butterflies, but not enough to do butterflies. And then I was like, bees. I, I don't like being stung by a bee at all, but I love like the concept of the bees and the hive and working and like, like, and everybody coming together. So it kind of stemmed that it was like bees. I like bees um, and happy. So Jenna, like, I love people around me to be happy. I choose to be happy all the time. My mom um, instilled that in my dad, uh, like happiness, like being positive and sharing that happiness with others has always been ingrained with me. Um, I love to make people happy and I'll do whatever I can to make sure that people are happy around me. And so when we're in class or when I'm with you or when I'm with friends, I love to bring together community and people and bring happiness uh, because the world needs more happiness. And so all of a sudden I was like, well, let's be the be happy stampers. And so it kind of came up like that. My cousin Kelly, who's been helping me since May of 2018. So my cousin Kelly helped me get like the ball running on like the marketing and graphics. And so um, we actually have team shirts that like when anybody attends an on stage that's on my team, I always do. I've now going my third year that we do team shirts and we make them. We screen print them ourselves at Kelly's house. And so, yeah, so long story short, you guys, that's a little side quest, but good information, like kind of cool. So in case you're on my team and you don't know that story either, it's like always nice to hear that. Sometimes you don't know that. Um, and so, yeah, so we're the be happy stampers and like, our number one goal in my mind is to be happy and bring happiness to others. So, um, and have fun while we're doing it. Cause Mary Gunn would say we need to make sure we're having fun. <laughs> so, so yes. So having fun while we're being happy is amazing. So good question though. Yay. <laughs> so you guys, this is how, and I should pull up my, um, I'm going to pull this up. So hi, Holly Pablo. I'm going to pull up my messages. So that, oh, Tammy, I'll, I'll, you guys, class will be short today, shorter than a normal class. So we're going to um, avoid, oh, I'm going to turn my volume down. That's probably a good thing, right? Yep. Okay, good. And you guys, I don't know if you saw it, but this, I, I had talked about this for a hot second too. Um, <laughs> you are sunshine. Yay, Holly. Thank you. So you guys, I am beyond, I, 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 the concept of what is happening is not making me happy, but the fact that we recognized it already last year, I became um, aware more so of child tra trafficking um, and the industry and um, what all is going on probably about a year ago. So what are we in the summer? Yep, probably last summer is when I was exposed to that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like you can't, you can't even fathom the thought of that's really happening in this world. This day and age, that there are more people enslaved, more children and women and men enslaved than there were back when slavery was legal. And so the, we do two card benefits a year, you guys. The first one that's always in April, we donate that to the MS Foundation because we have about five people on the team who have been diagnosed with MS, my sister-in-law as well, but she's not on the team. Um, and so Cheryl is very instrumental in that. And she does a lot with her, um, with her organization to bring um, vote, uh, proceeds to the National MS Foundation. And then we, we used to do the fall one as well, but we switched it up this past year. And we've made it that the fall one is always going to be a rotating um, organization. And last year we picked our Underground Railroad um, started by T, um, T, Tim Ballard, who was with Homeland Security, uh, um, Department of Homeland Security, and he was with them for like 12 years, and he transitioned from um, tracking down pedophiles to actually saving children. And so the movie that you guys are seeing, it's like the number one in the box office actually right now is by Angel Studios. He actually, um, it, the movie is off of what has happened to um, his experiences. It's based on his true story of saving the two children um, that are in the movie. And so Angel Studios put, put on the movie, um, all the money that is spent by people seeing the movie goes to Angel Studios. But the Tim Ballard and our Underground Railroad, he is um, where our money to, went to last October. When we did the car making benefit, we raised $2,500, you guys. And that's where it went to. So in case anybody didn't connect those dots, uh, hi, Sandy Wicklander. That is all connected, um, which is, I'm so happy that people, like five years ago, the world wouldn't have been ready to see that movie. And they fought for five years. Um, nobody in Hollywood wanted to do that movie. And so now Angel Studios said they would, and they are the ones that were able to bring it out and make people aware of it. It's one of these things that we can't 
stop hiding anymore. So um, it made me feel like I want to do another card benefit just to raise some more money to help them with that cause. Um, this year, you guys, the next card benefit is on World Card Making Day. Um, I think we've already, I've already got the, um, the event out there. I applied, you guys. Stampin' Up! has a Heart of Stampin' Up! award and um, they select different um, you have to apply for it. I applied for it on June 30th, you guys. Uh, we'll see if my event gets picked. I should say our event. It's never my event. It's ours, our, always our event. October 7th is our next card-making benefit. And the organization we picked this um, fall is the Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, and so that's where the proceeds for this one. But when I watched this video, it just reassured like, sure that I'm glad that that is where we sent our money to. And it made me feel like, oh my gosh, how can I squeeze in another card buffet, or not a card buffet, a card benefit in the year. So we do one for MS, one for our Underground Railroad, and one for Wounded Warrior, <laughs> you know, because our veterans are near and dear to my heart too, because the reason we are free is because we have people that fight for our freedom. So yeah, so you guys, okay, so that was another side quest. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you haven't seen The Sound of Freedom yet, it it's hard to watch, but it's not made in a way that you're exposed to actually seeing images, right? You're 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 shown the story, um, and that is what is amazing is that they were able to do this movie in a way that it makes people like it lights fire under your butt after you watch it. Like, how can I make a difference, right? To help this, I I think like, everybody needs to come together to combat this. So. Okay, so where did this class come about, you guys? Share, you guys, do you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. I talk more, <laughs> if you figured that out. So share, create, inspire, you guys. So this all started um, because I started doing classes with Rose. I started collaborating with Rose Coleman in Canada. So if you are in um, Canada and you're um, not sure who you should reach out to for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, you definitely want to reach out to Rose. She is amazing beyond amazing, um, times 150,000, okay? So Rose is your girl if you're in Canada. I'm working with somebody. I I want to work, start working with somebody in Australia, you guys. So that's on my radar um, for the next kind of uh, joint acquisition, I guess you could say, um, for combining forces with card classes. Um, so Rose does a technique club class, and um, I piggybacked onto it. And so now people in the U.S. can take her class via me. And I didn't buy the Stampin' Up! binder, you guys. I, I apologize. There is a Memories and More binder that you could buy. But... Um, there are the page protectors aren't there for four by six, meaning these page protectors are there. So I'm like, well, I was looking online and I found this recipe book and I'm like, I love flowers. And it reminded me a lot of Stampin' Up's, um, prints with their big flowers like this. Um, oh, thanks Maria. Um, and so it came with the, the page protector. So whoever does the technique club with me via Rose could buy this binder, get their page protectors in here. I don't provide the page protectors like Rose does. I You get them with your binder that you get. Um, and so Rose, so it came with all these recipe cards, right? But I was like, well, we're using the book for making these things, right? So making your technique club. And so I actually have here, I didn't get mine done, you guys. I'm a slacker. Um, I didn't even get mine done for um, June in here. So I got to put... Nope, this goes down here. So I got to get June in here, and then I got to sponge this and stamp my, like, stamp a sentiment in there. That was the partial embossing. So that goes here. I got to sponge it, make it pretty. And then we were like, well, we have all these recipe cards left. What do we do with them? And so we all came up together with an idea of, well, let's have somebody send me a recipe and let's make a card. And so I've been keeping the recipe with my card. And then Mary Lemke had a card here. And um, then we also had, I believe this was Sam, Sandy Wicklander. So Sandy's cards. You guys, I've been saving these. And this was Millie Kindle right here. And then we had um, Jean Maxwell. And then now Sherry Everett will go here with her card and my card. So that's how it all came to be. Um, and I also I have that for the tutorials with Rose that I saved them in there. All right. So that's how this came to be, you guys. And so I'm starting to get myself a little recipe book that has a dual purpose for me. Okay, so we're going to make a card. <laughs> and it is uh, thanks, a big thanks to Sherry Everett. Um, it's called a Tuck Gatefold. So if anybody would like to request one of these recipe cards from me, you are welcome to. What I highly suggest and encourage you to do is go to my website. Go to today's date, which is July 12th. And when you go to the event for today... In the morning, there's three events, you guys, today. The first one is the Share, Create, and Inspire card class. If you want to get a recipe card from me, what you have to do is click on this word here. It says you then go are taken to a form. 
and you fill out the Google form. And then from there, all your information is in a spreadsheet where I can track and log who I've sent these to, who I've gotten them back from, and who I've done the card for. And you guys, I will sadly say that I don't have one after this. This is the last one. So uh, <clears throat> Maria Gilbertson, um, Carissa Alberts, um, Sherry Pyre, <laughs> three people I can think of off the top of my head that I'm waiting for these cards back from. I have about five out there. I can't exactly remember who the other two, uh, um, uh, they're on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of who they are. But if you have one of these recipe cards, you promised me you'd send it back. So get that back to me because if I don't have it by the time class is next month, I'm going to skip the class and we don't want that, right? So this is like a little teasy threat, right? So um, make sure you get that back to me. And what we're going to do today is we're going to read through this and then we're going to make her card. And I've pulled a few things of like maybe what I think I might work with. I have studied this for a hot second um, and I'm trying to formulate like what kind of a fold this is and we're going to do it together. Good morning, Carmen Sanders. Oh, Sherry Pyre. Look at you mailing yours today. Awesome. I love it. Um, I know, Maria, I just mailed yours out like maybe last week or the week before. So you just got yours. Sherry's had hers for a little bit longer. And I know that oh, Carissa has had hers the longest at this moment. But um, as long as I get one of them, that's all that matters. I don't need all three of them because whoever's comes in first will be August and then we'll do September. And I thought if we ever get more than I can ever handle, we'll add on a class. Hi, Sherry Martin. Okay. So uh, we're looking at a base that's seven three quarters by five and a half, and we're scoring it four times. Okay, so I'm like, oh, okay. So we have like maybe a wavy kind of card. All right, um, we have eight cardstock pieces that are one and five eighths by five and three eighths, and she put in parentheses white. But you know how I operate? It might be white. It could be something different depending on you know it, it's my card at this point when I make it. But and then that's nice to see the differences, right? <clears throat> so eight panels tells me that this card is like um, one of those dressing, like you get behind this, what do you call it when you get behind a, a standing thing that is a trifold thing or whatever. And then, so it's got um, eight, it's got four sections and then eight makes, cause it's two on each side. So I'm thinking panels on each side. DSP is four, not, not eight. So I'm thinking the DSP is four mats on the front. She's got another card stock here that says deckled rectangles. And so, um, I did pull my deckled rectangles. I also pulled a couple other things. I put my gems there. I did pull just, I pulled the nested essential dies too because I thought those are super cool. Um, I think I'm going to be working with textured floral today just to show you guys. Um, I want to kind of premiere that because that's the sweet class. Well, it's actually a bundle class for next week. I did bring my deckled rectangles. I brought sending smiles. You guys, I can't live without my labels. And I have the little labels there. So I pulled in that kind of stuff. So it says deckled rectangles, and then it's a step down for deckled rectangles. So it's a cardstock mat with a DSP in front of it, and then decorate with flowers, etc. Then stamp a label and add ribbon, and then adhere to the rectangle. Um, stamp and adhere two white panels to the inside, which I'm thinking is the. It's either the inside of the front or the inside of the back. We'll get there. Um, adhere DSP to the four of the white cardstock panels and adhere them to the front of the inside of the gatefold. Stamp and adhere the back two remaining pieces of white cardstock using dimensionals. Adhere deckled rectangle layer to the center section of the card. Close by tucking the panels under the deckled rectangles. And with that one, it made me feel like it was a, a flying seagull card. Not a flying seagull card. What is the finch? Flying finch. Hi, Becky Gandolfo. Yes, you're usually with the babies. You're so busy, girl. I'm so happy you popped on for a second or longer, depending on how long you can say. So it made me feel like, so the seagull card we did in the past, and then this one could be like that flying finch card, which is a vertical version of the seagull card. Stella and add gems. Okay. <clears throat> so with that being said, where are we going to go with this, right? I I brought some ribbons over. I'm like, I don't know what color. So when you're trying to create a card and you're not sure what you're going to do. Um, so this is always the note for two with mystery night. But da -da. Um, pick your, pick your designer series paper and then pull in your cardstock colors and then figure your stamp set. I, I know I pulled textured floral because I want to work with flowers. So the DSP that I picked, hi Hilda now, is flowery, going to be flowery. Now, I felt bad because last month we used this paper and I loved how it turned out. So I felt bad using it again, 
But I thought, well, maybe. What if it's the right one? What if it's the right pattern in here to use for today? Then I'm like, well, then I'm going to still pull it just in case. So I'm looking for a designer series paper pattern that's kind of flowery, but not too overly flowery. So you guys, just to show you, the textured floral class that's coming up next week, it features the, I want to say Les Mis, but it's not. It's less Shops or Les Shops. Um, designer series paper, but we pulled in texture floral to marry a suite with a bundle. But um, the, the card I want to case with this, so this is one card. So it's a fun fold. It opens like this, and then it has one more fold to it like this. So you guys, this class is next week. I have maybe 20 left of this class. This one right here is what I have in my head for casing. Just, I love the concept of the colors. I also love this one. So this is for next week. And then this is our gourmet card for next week, you guys, just to show you. You're going to do a fun fold. This had so many pieces to it, you guys. We kitted all these up yesterday. We kitted up 753 cards yesterday, and then it opens like this. All you need for this card, you guys, is some sort of floral action on the front or something else if you don't want to do flowers, right? It's very versatile that you could use this for something else. And then um, it includes all your stuff that you need to make this awesome, amazing fun fold. So I'm using this like these cards as inspiration along with her recipe to make this card. Okay. So that's what I've got in my head. And I'm trying to think what I want to do for a color combination. And I'm leaning towards these two cards right here, either going down the purple. You guys, I love me my purple. Hi, Gwen Simmons. I love my purple. I love <clears throat> the team blue. Is It's like team blue speaks to me too. Right. So I'm trying to figure out, I know I need four DSP panels that are going to get matted onto potentially white and then onto a card base. So I'm trying to think here, well, watch. Okay, let's grab this. So this is if you guys are at home too. This is what you're going to want to do. Grab. Like if we're going to do white, I picture white. Hi, Barbara Gabby. Glad to see that the fun full made an appearance after mystery card night. Yes, it sure did. And everybody that does that class is going to get it. Um, so we are... Like what I'm picturing is that she picked white. It's the background mat for the DSP, but it's also on the back <clears throat> of this fun fold so that you can write your verse on the back. And I want to say this is the piece that we used last month. And so I'm trying to not use the same piece. Um, and I, I, I was thinking maybe this one. This is from that delightfully eclectic, but I didn't want it to be too dark. So with these flowers and then, so, and then... I don't necessarily have to use the same DSP. So she's got here, I think on the front, she's got a decal rectangle with a decal rectangle. And the back one is cardstock and the top is DSP. But I, they don't have to be the same DSP. It could be like this DSP mixes with this one. And to brighten this up, like this is dark to me, right? So if your whole, oh, there is goo on there. There's a little glue dot. I could, it was stuck and I knew there was something going on, like a little glue booger there. So this is really dark. And so... If we do a white mat, it helps to brighten it up. But the other thing is that there's bubble bath in here. And I'm going to just pull. I hope I have a bubble bath. It would be sad if I didn't. I haven't gone through and officially. Oh, there's fresh freesia, lemon lime. Oh, my goodness. I don't have a bubble bath down here. And that's not bubble bath. That's fresh freesia. So maybe let's see what this looks like. So like what I try to do, hi, Mary Six coming in. Hi, Deb Norman. Thank you. See that? I, so when we're designing cards, we layer and mat things together to see how they will look together. Before we start cutting anything, we kind of map out our color combination. So this, what I try to do with Share, Create, Inspire with you guys is show you how different things look together before actually deciding on them. Okay, so that looks much better to me than the purple did behind there, and I'm still not sold on it, right? And I'm not even sold yet on this DSP. I feel like I want something a little bit brighter and more cheerful than that. And I'm almost leaning towards doing in, so in this, this pack here, there's, oh, the paper, <laughs> this paper, there's, there's one sheet in here that's harder to work with, but I'm looking, and maybe it doesn't even have to be floral patterns, you guys. I could potentially do this gray pattern and then bring in that pop of color with it. <clears throat> so that color, 
with berry burst possibly. Let's see here. So you guys, this is the hard part. Once we get all this, um, yes, Barbara Godby, you betcha. Um, it's called the Sherry Martin. I have to, your sticker here. I'm putting that on your pile. Um, so Barbara, if you just want to go to the website and pay for it, that's perfectly fine. Or if you hang tight, I'm going to mail them together. I'll give you a discount code for shipping so that, because I'm going to ship them together, but you want the textured floral class next week. So I'm just making sure you get signed up for that. You guys, I will be honest with you. Tyler and I took some days this weekend um, and I stayed off my email for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then we kitted up 750 cards between Monday and Tuesday. So I owe people lots of responses back for emails and um, um, text messages. And so um, just hang tight. I'm going to try to get through all that today. Okay, so not loving that either, you guys. So I think these, look at this. Okay, so these little strips right here, this is the hardest part, you guys. We're going to get through this and then I'll be good. We need our DSP to be one and seven sixteenth. And this is one and a half. So I need four of these panels. So if I want to work with something like this, I have all, so from kidding up your class, you guys, we have all these extra strips like this. So if you're looking to use up designer series paper that you have strips of, why don't we try this? Um, oh, if you tell, okay. Yeah, so Barbara, you got Let's Just Stamp and I'm gonna mail your Let's Just Stamp with this class. You can take $4 off. Um, I usually take $4 off when we combine classes. So instead of sending $24 for textured floral, you can send 20, okay? All right, so a check for 20 is perfect. Um, all right, so I we're gonna go, we're gonna kinda case this card from a color standpoint, you guys, and we're gonna make it into the fold that, that Sherry has. How about let's do that? All right, so knowing that that's what we're gonna do, we get to use up some scraps, which is awesome. And we're going to pull in, let's put this back here. We're gonna do these strips right here. We're not gonna use these. We need some white cardstock, that, so we'll keep that out. And we need some navy and some bonnie. Let's try that. So let's put the freesia back and grab some navy and some balmy. So knight of navy, oh, thank goodness, I have some here, that's good. And we're gonna pull in balmy, blue as well. All right, so I've got scraps of that. I think we're gonna go with the, like, versus this one, you guys, we're gonna go for team blue. So just so you know, this is all for team blue. Um, I have to say that I was out of your comfort zone when you wrote, <laughs> with the, <laughs> you know what, Sherry? And that's okay. You can be outside of your comfort zone doing something and the sheer fact that you got through it and you sent it to me is a big step. And you guys, no matter, if, if So just letting you know that Sherry was outside of her comfort zone and it was something that she wouldn't normally do, but she survived, right? Sherry, you did good. You sent it. We're doing your card and it's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to see your card and show everybody your card and my card together. So, um, so just know that if anybody's on the fence about doing something like this, get over it. Like the splinters are going to kill you. <laughs> so, all right, they'll get infected and you don't want that. All right, so we're going to go with something similar like this from a color standpoint. And then we're going to pull this base in. So I'm thinking about this. So if we do our base in blue, we would do our mats in the balmy blue, very similar to this. We're going to use this strip here for our DSP, and there's four of them. And then I'm thinking on the back side, we will mat the back to, because you'll be able to write something. So I think that we're gonna kind of case this and go with that. So let's cut our card base. If anybody wants to do this with us, like just ask, I can repeat things. Or right now, if you guys wanna do this, you could take a screenshot of this right now and then you have the measurements as well. And then there's the recipe card. You guys, I photograph this and I save it in the event as well. So this is a five and a half by seven and three quarters. So on a, a sheet of paper is 11 inches by eight and a half. If you're here in the States, that's how our paper usually is. It's eight and a half by 11. Um, and so half of 11 is five and a half, and then we need seven and three quarters. So we can get it this way because this paper is eight and a half. So don't cut your paper at five and a half here and then seven and three quarters here because you'll end up with a really skinny strip and then you'll end up with a weird thing here. When you cut the paper at five and a half this way, you guys, five and a half this way, that leaves the other half of the sheet as a normal card base that you can use for something else. Okay, yes, Sherry, everybody is kind and encouraging, absolutely. 
I wouldn't have it any other way. So now we're going to score. So you guys, I am an avid fan of the scoring tool that Stampin' Up! has. Um, so I'm going to pull that out and hopefully not cause a big ruckus. So I love this scoreboard, you guys. I'm precise with my scoring. All the card kits that you guys that you get that are scored are done on a board like this. So we can be very precise. So it says score at one and three quarters. So one and three quarters. And you know what, Sherry? If anything is incorrect on the recipe card, it's okay. Because you know what Naughty Nancy would say? It's just paper. We can fix it. So um, three and five eighths. So here's three and five eighths. We need four and an eighth. Four and an eighth. And then the next one is uh, six. So six is here. Oh, I didn't cut it. Ha, ha, ha. One moment, please. I'm still going to score this at six. Because I'm like, oh, there's a lot left over here. I did not cut it up. I already messed up, Sherry. I didn't cut it at the right length. And that's okay. We're going to do it right now. I caught it because I'm like, oh, there's a lot left over there. So let's pull the arm out here. And we're going to cut this at seven and three quarters. So we go to seven and three quarters here. When we cut this off, there's a little scrap here. And now this looks centered to me. There's panel, 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 and then there's a middle section right here. So again, you guys, anybody doing this at home, it's one and three quarter, three and five eighths, four and an eighth, and six. Okay, so that is the front to me. And then we're gonna cut some cardstock. Now, she's got eight of them. and. One and five eighths by five and three eighths. So I'm going to do blue on the front and then we're going to do white on the back. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm mixing and matching mine. Um, if I did white behind this, I don't think it would look as nice. This looks really, the, the blue pops. So five and three eighths. So you guys, your paper's five and a half wide. So you want to cut it at five and three eighths here, which is just cutting off basically an eighth of an inch. So we've got ourselves a skinny little border, okay? It's hard to do, in general, um, borders with 16 inch. If you're off by it a little bit, it, it kind of makes it disappear. We're going with it just because the panels are skinnier and so you almost have to do that. So I've got my five and three eighths and now I'm gonna flip it this way and I'm gonna do one and five eighths and I'm gonna do that four times. So one, two, Three. Hi, good morning, Karen Wettstein. We'll see you soon for class. Yay. You guys, I have two other classes today. We're doing the monthly card class twice today. Um, I have plenty of kits left over for that too. We're doing it live tomorrow night in case anybody um, is wondering. It's my six o'clock. Today's Wednesday already, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, so tomorrow is um, monthly card class and um, if anybody wants kits, I, I have a bunch left yet. Now we're going to do the other four for the back side. So five and three eighths again. And this is actually five and three eighths. Wow. How did that happen? This Wow. Okay. So that's five and three eighths. And we're going to do one and five eighths. So all of these should end up being the same size. And then we need two more. So again, this measurement, you guys, is five and three eighths by one and five eighths. So this class, what we do right now, you guys can get in on a drawing. Um, anybody who creates a card using Sherry's recipe here can submit their cards. I haven't created the post or scheduled the post yet to go live. I'll do it right after class. But there'll be, a, just like Mystery Night, you'll be able to share your card. Um, and you'll be able to share it in the graphic that I have. Um, and anybody who shares can get in on a drawing. And I believe Karen from Australia, she won. And so I sent her cards in the mail as her prizes. And I hope I hope they've arrived because I mailed them a couple weeks ago. So now the DSP is, there's four of them. And it's one and seven sixteenths by five and a quarter. So let me think about that. So one and five eighths. So on a ruler, I just want to make sure our mats are good here. So one and five eighths is here. And if we go down to seven sixteenths, that's we're taking off three sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so that's good. I love three sixteenths of an inch. So we're gonna do, it's just, if anybody's wondering, a sixteenth is a half of an eighth. And so 
Um, we're going down three sixteenths, so we're going three tick marks down. And we're gonna cut it there first. And it's just barely, you guys, look at that little sliver I cut off. This was the perfect size to use for it. But now we had five and three eighths, and five and three eighths, if we take off three sixteenths to keep it even, it I Sherry, if you want to confirm, let me know if this is right. But five and three eighths, I would do five and three sixteenths um, versus five and a quarter. So let me know if that is accurate. Like it should be three sixteenths versus a quarter. And that would be the 16th, three sixteenths all the way around. So I'm going to do five and three sixteenths. And we'll know when we test it, if we hold this in the middle of our blue mat like this, it should be even all the way around, just like that, I think. So I'm looking for your confirmation, Sherry, if it's okay if I um, update that. And that's, it's perfect you did this in pencil because I could um, easily, because I haven't photographed your picture yet. So let's take this to the 16th. So five and three 16th. And we need four of these. So again, it was one and seven 16th. You guys, this is going to be an awesome fun fold. I cannot wait to see it. Look at that. Those are the perfect. I love it. Isn't it a good feeling when you can use up some like scraps like this? One, two, three. That would work perfectly. Okay, cool. So three sixteenths right here. Because if you had it a sixteenth bigger, you know, honestly, a sixteenth is not going to make or break a card, you guys. It really isn't. So um, now let's see here. Um, I'm picturing what's happening here is that this goes here. And then this one's going to go here. This is going to go here. And then like these will go on here for the front. And I'm wondering if we need to put something here in the middle. I wonder if, Sherry, confirm if we should um, create a little extra panel for here. These white ones will go on the back. I wonder if we find like a little complementary pattern of designer paper to go in the middle of that. I don't know what I would have here. If there's a blue, a solid -y blue one. Well, there's blue here, blue 42. Um, let's just grab this. This one has some navy. I wonder, that's too busy. Oh, I wonder if we just put balmy blue back there. Like, let's cut, you guys, we're gonna cut a little strip of balmy blue and put that right in the middle here and see what, what that does. I don't think it's on the card, but I think we're going to add a little accent piece here. So a little accent piece. So this little panel in the middle is really skinny, you guys. It is a half of an inch. So that means we need th um, the five and three eighths high, which is what the other ones were. That's crooked. Um, my head is spinning with numbers. We'll stop it from spinning. It's okay. You don't have to remember all these numbers, you guys. We're going to have the recipe card for you to look at if you want to recreate this card. We're going to do this at 3 16 because that is, I think, because a half would be um, here. So let's do 3 16 less. Let's go right here and see what this does. You could decorate the center. Okay, we're going to see once about decorating the center here with a little strip. We'll put that right in the middle. And I'm going to guess we might need one for the back side. One, two, three. So we're gonna grab this guy. <clears throat> Where's my half inch? Right there it is, okay. So she said we can decorate it however we want. Oh man, so when you're cutting a little 3 16 you gotta be super careful so, so that it doesn't move on you. I'm gonna set this down. And when you set it down, you wanna make sure it doesn't move as you're cutting it. All right, so I did this extra, you guys. Hi, Sarah Mitchell, I did this extra in case we need it, okay. So those are extra scraps here. I think for right now, we're gonna be done cutting until we can start pulling the base together here. So let's see this. I'm not worried about the top for decorating, but it says um, adhere the DSP. I think we're gonna glue this. Let's see how we're gonna fold this. And because it says here, close by tucking the panels under the deckled rectangle. So I'm guessing the deckled rectangle stuff gets put here. So Hang on, Cherry. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> my, <laughs> my head is spinning. So, okay. Um, like this. Hang on. We got a middle section. 
Like that? I think so, yes. And then those must come out like that. Okay, Sh Sherry, I'm looking for confirmation. I'm going to start burnishing this, though. And I'm going to do this one time, and I know Sherry's watching. So let's we're gonna fold that like this. You guys, don't worry. We're going to get this. This is... I. I <laughs> it's fun, right? All right, so Sherry, this is what I've got. I feel like these just fold in like this, right? I'm guessing that this folds like this and then this opens like this. And so I think that's what we have. And it says here the DSP of the four to the white cardstock panels, but we did blue. So I'm okay with that. So let's get these guys adhered together and then let's get these on our card front. And let's get some glue on here. Doop, ba doop, ba doop. Okay, and then, you know what? We're gonna glue the little blue strip down. He's just a little bit of extra color for us. All right, so got our little panels done here and we're gonna get all those glued. So there's one. That is correct. Okay, good deal. See, I'm so happy you're watching and guiding me. You're my teacher today. <laughs> teacher, teacher. All right, let's get this guy on here. And then this one on here. Oh, I just got glue on my hand. It's all right. Put this guy in the middle here. Okay, so I'm going to put this guy in this middle section right here because I'm guessing that not all of it's going to get seen because we're going to attach. Because I read here, you put the, the little rectangle on the middle here with this. Okay, so now adhere the DSP of the four white cardstock panels and adhere to the front and inside of the gatefold. So we're going to flip these all over, you guys. So our card is coming together. So when you guys take a class with me, like, for example, you're going to make this card with me next week for those that took the class, and you come across a different layout um, using these card samples is a great way to like, oh my gosh, these color combinations look great. I'm just going to tweak them and make them into a different card layout. So, um, so that's pretty cool. So we're going to see that, that action happen too with casing this and using a different recipe. And then this one goes I'm hoping this is right, Sherry, that that opens like this. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I think, right? Maybe. Hang on. I'm second guessing myself. Because, hmm. I wonder. Hang on, you guys. Stamp in here the back. Okay. D adhere DSP to the four of them and, and adhere to the front and inside the gatefold. Stamp in here to the back, the two remaining pieces of white cardstock. So this is the back, but when this gets folded in, don't we, Sherry, don't we wanna see the DSP here? I think I want to, you guys, I'm, I'm just thinking, it's okay, this is gonna come up. <laughs> if you're not sure, like pull it up, right? Okay. So put the DSP on the outside flap. So yeah, so like when this is shut, I feel like this DSP needs to go here. I think this is what you mean, right? So when this card shuts, you're gonna see, so we're gonna use this guy right here then, and this here, because this folds in. <laughs> Are you guys watching me on the struggle bus? Okay. So this is going to be folded in, and then when this is open, is there one eighth around? Yes, Hildy, that is correct. There's not. No, 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 no. It's it's um it's a sixteenth. There's a sixteenth around each of them. So basically, um, this is five and a half. This blue mat is five and three eighths, and then this mat is five and three sixteenths. So. All right, Sherry, I'm struggling here because when this opens up, like you, we've got a thing here. So we've got the front prettied up. The back is going to be two white panels. I wonder if I want, I want more designer series paper, I think is what I want so that we only have white on the back. I think 
I think that's what I want to do, you guys. So, <laughs> it's okay, you guys. I think I got a plan in my head. And we're going to put, you guys are making me sweat here. I think I want to put this here. I'm okay with this. And this is still my front. This opens up like that. We're going to do two white panels back here. I've got my balmy here. I'm just going to cut two more here, you guys. So, oh, these are making me hot here. All right. <laughs> It's okay though. I can handle this. This is a good struggle to have. So five and three A's. And we said one and three A's here. I think one and five A's. Okay, so here's one of these. And let's see if this is one and five A's. If that is, it's meant to be. It's really close. It's going to just get us shavings. Look at that. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is what it's like to like design blind a little bit. Okay, so let's grab you guys. I have another one of these strips. So let's grab this. And this was one and seven sixteenths. And then we did five and three sixteenths. So you guys, I am one that if I lose something wrong, I will rip it right up as gently as I can, gently Bentley. And then reuse it and salvage it. <laughs> All right. I think I have a plan here now. I should maybe have gone with this from the beginning, but you never know these things until you um, get going. So I wanted more decoration. I forgot about that whole folding in thing. So let's see. Now we're back on track and this one will go here. Okay. And then we're going to do this guy on this one. Hi, Patty Wright. Um, had to get lab work done this morning. I hope that it all is good for you. All right. I bet you didn't have, you couldn't eat for a little while too before you get your lab work done. All right. So now we're going to glue that one onto this side. So you guys, I opted for six panels of my DSP going on here, which is good. And then we're gonna save our two for the back. We're gonna put it like this. So when I cut that hair off the edge, it was there's was hardly anything there. So it left a little rolled edge on there. So we'll just trim that off. We're gonna put this on here. Okay. Oh, you guys. Okay. Um, this is now our. Like, it's like you're behind the changing, you're like behind the curtain changing, right? So this folds in like this. So it's still an A2 size card because it's five and a half by four and a quarter. This folds in. And then on our back here, we're going to have the strip here, I think. And then we're going to put the back two white panels. Once well, I have extra panels and that's okay. I'll just put those away as scraps. Um, so this is where we're going to stamp on sentiment. So we've got our base done. <laughs> like It's all about the base, you guys. This is look cool. I think that looks awesome. Okay, and I like that they're different heights. I didn't keep them all straight across. All right, so now we're gonna decorate the front of the card. Whew, okay, I think we got it. So we're talking about deco rectangles here and we can do deco rectangles. And what I'm thinking is maybe that size and then that size would probably be good. This one is gonna be, oh, that one could actually work too. I want to go through the whole concept of doing something like this is what I want to do. Just because I want to show you about, hey, we've got a cool design over here with like color combinations and let's morph it into this card right here. So this was Sweet Survey, you guys, and Lost Lagoon. Lost Lagoon is on the table. Hang on. So we have the white scraps that I just had and the flower for this one, all these flowers are from here. It's this, this set right here. So we're gonna grab this and this, and we're gonna stamp a flower in the back. And it says birthday blooms for you. So we're gonna grab that as well. <sighs> birthday blooms for you. So that's this guy. We're gonna fig figure out how to put him on here. And we also, that's for our back. <laughs> Is like, I hope you're enjoying this struggle. So you guys, I get it. It's not the easiest thing to come up with different different card layouts and designs and figuring things out. So I think that stamp's gonna fit on there perfectly. So let's grab a block and let's get that stamped. I always wondered about 
<laughs> those creating those cards. Oh, good. All right, so let's grab our mat, our piercing mat here, and our scrap of paper to put underneath us so that we don't get the ink everywhere. And we're gonna stamp, so you guys, this is for next week too. You're gonna have to stamp one of these guys, these guys, and then we only need a little bit for the other one. So I'm only gonna stamp just a little because we end up cutting it off anyways. So that's Sweet Sorbet. And then I said I was gonna put a little flower on the back of that one. So let's grab another block here. And as long as I've got the pink ink, the, the Sweet Survey ink open, this is our bottom panel, or our back panel, I should say. We're just gonna put a little flower in the bottom corner of that. So that's what I was thinking there. And then we need Lost Lagoon and the stemmy part. Yes, Deb, I hope that you guys had a great anniversary party. Um, I was thinking of you. I definitely was a lot. And I was so happy to see some awesome pictures. You were beautiful, Deb. Your dress was exquisite. I hope you guys had a great 50th anniversary party last Friday. Um, I would have loved to have been there, but Tyler, <clears throat> we were going to surprise you, Deb. I'll be honest with you. I even had confirmed and RSVP'd with your daughter that we were going to be there. And I'm sad to say that Tyler did not, he wasn't able to leave work until 4.15. And when he told me he wasn't ready to leave until 4.15 or he wasn't going to be home until 4.15, um, then I couldn't make it because by the time we would have got there, your party would have been over. And I was really sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Deb, I tried to, to, to surprise you. You guys, I think I left the dies for this set up in my craft room upstairs. So, so Deb, we were going to surprise you. So, when I saw the pictures of you, I was so happy for you and Ed that you guys, it looked like you had a really great party. And now I feel really bad because I was going to hand deliver your 50th anniversary card. And... Um, and now I haven't here yet because we didn't make it down. <laughs> so, sad face. Oh, but... I will get it in the mail for you this week now, you guys. So this has a die for it, just so you know. Um, but unfortunately, I think that I have the whole kit and caboodle of these shapes upstairs. Um, so we're just going to rough cut this really quick here and get this. So I made two of them. And what we're going to do is put one on the top and one on the bottom. And so now I have a plan for like what we're going to do. This is going to be like on the top part. And this is going to be on the bottom part, but we don't need the whole thing. And that's why I didn't stamp the whole thing. Yeah, she told you after. Good. I'm glad she told you guys. I, I cried. <laughs> I was so sad and heartbroken. I wanted to surprise you and Ed so bad. And um, Tyler's boss just didn't let him leave. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So anyways, and Tyler didn't had a miscommunication with his boss. And I guess he's got to learn someday. So anyways, that's how that went. So instead, we went to go see The Sound of Freedom, which was, uh, we were supposed to go on the 4th of July, but that fell through. So, you know, you know, we did get to see it then, which is what was on our list. Okay, so we've got the flowers. So you guys, I'm doing something similar to over here, and that's going to be down here. And where, where's the deepest sympathy come from? Well, we're doing birthday blooms. Okay, so you guys, there is this little die that is in here. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, that's too small. Okay, so maybe it needs to be this guy right here. Birthday blooms for you. And we'll put that going this way. So let's stamp on another scrap of white here. Oh, man. And Deb, I was going to call you, but I had, like, I was just, I was so sad about it that I didn't even know how to tell you. Okay, so. Oh, so here I'm telling you through a live so everybody gets to hear. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do birthday blooms for you <clears throat> and let's get this guy cleaned up. We'll get this off of here and we're going to do all this here. <laughs> you wish you had my fussy cutting skills, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I just try not to go too close to the edge. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to die cut this 
And we're going to, um, we're also going to figure out our rectangle situation here quick. All right, so there, that's a scrap. So I'm thinking this is going to go in the middle and we need to get some Lost Lagoon designer series, not designer series, um, some Lost Lagoon cardstock. I think I have that. Wherever my cardstock went is right here. So we're going to cut two of those. the little leafy things and those are here so I grabbed out of all the dies I did at least grab those things right here so we're going to cut two of these label you guys this is going to come together pretty quick now I think well we still have to figure out a DSP yet and maybe we don't do a DSP okay so we've got two ready for that and we're going to cut this and oh hi here i don't bring it when i come okay all right but it's always fun to get happy meal that it is um yeah so we'll have a great time when we come see you in a couple weeks this i know um i'm wondering let's see here so if this this one might be too big i think what we're going to do is use this guy and then if that comes out like this this is going to come out like that we're going to have some leaves coming out. I'm going to think maybe we're just going to use one white one and go with the white one. Or let's see here. If we do a white one, we wouldn't have to use DSP behind it. I think what we're going to do is grab, I wonder if this is scrap is too little or is this too big? Oh, you guys look at that. It's the perfect size. So this is the panel that I cut extra. It's the perfect size for this. So let's get some of these cutting and we're going to see once how we're going to pull this together. Yeah. Oh, and that's why I changed everything around them. We changed class on um, Friday morning for Diane to be early. We changed the memories and more class to be early. And um, we changed our plans on Friday night <laughs> to be this coming Friday night. Also, we could come down. We had a hotel booked that we couldn't stay at because we weren't going to drive down there at like nine o'clock at night just to stay at the hotel. So it was a rigmarole. I will tell you, I was not happy with Tyler, <laughs> but that's part of it, I guess. All right. So we're going to get this little guy in here going. I straighten this up here a little bit. Sherry Pyre found a new card design and wish she could have done it on the recipe, but I started with the recipe card, so I had to go with the original. So, Sherry Pyre, I have a proposition for you. And I know that um, do, 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 Millie Kindle, um, Millie Kindle requested a second um, recipe card. Um, I was going to send it out to her um, with the thought, though, that I'd like to get some through some others first. But if you want to request another one, Sherry Pyre, Go ahead and fill out the form. Wait, I have tape here. Go ahead and fill out the form, and then that will indicate to me that you want another recipe card, and I will send you another recipe card. And we won't do it right away, but we could save it for in a few, like, let's see, like, where we're at with recipe cards getting back. And then maybe we can sneak it in again, and maybe we'll add in an extra Create Share Inspire class, right? So, yeah, if you want to do another one, just... Um, keep you know that thing is going to wiggle 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 with me yes i will send you another card fill out the form though again so that i have a documentation that i um would have given you a second one if you don't mind okay perfect okay so you guys we have our sentiment ready to go we have our green leaves two sets of them here we have a white rectangle we're going to see what that looks like if that looks good, we might just go with only that. But if it needs a little assistance with some extra color, we would potentially add something. So I've got a hot mess of dyes going on here. Let's move this bad boy out of the way and see what we got here. So this would be super cool embossed. Um, <laughs> we need to grab some Stella. We'll get these guys Stella'd. I have an appointment I have to leave. We'll catch the replay. Okay, sounds good, Barbara Gabby. Good luck with your appointment. And thanks for putting the check in the mailbox so quickly. I appreciate that. Um, you guys, every, you guys, at the end of this class, I'm going to go around and show you the card kits that are all over the place. Holy Moses. We kitted up three classes yesterday. We kitted up Technique Club class with Rose. I have one left in case anybody still wants to get signed up for that class. We kitted up Texture Floral and the Ink Paper Scissors. So... 
there was a lot going on yesterday, you guys. Um, yes, I don't think you need more DSP. I don't think so either, Sherry. I think that this is gonna be good. Um, there's a lot of DSP on the card already. I'm very happy that I used up all those skinny strips. That was perfect. So this is gonna come out like this. And then we have these two, just to show you, it's like very gonna be similar to that. This is gonna come like this. And then our birthday blooms in the middle. Now, I'm wondering though, this is a lot, like the white gets lost. That white gets lost back there. So, because this right here, I'm almost thinking that the birthday blooms for you is a little bit distracting, but I still have to add ribbon. And I'm wondering if the rectangle should have been a hair that was that size. I wonder if this should have been bigger and potentially in balmy blue. So just, you know, you don't know it until you try it, right? So what would Nancy say? It's just paper. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to, just for S's and G's, we are going to make this in balmy blue. And I wanna see how it looks in balmy blue back there. And I know that's like a big scrap, you guys. It's okay, I can handle it. Um, okay, we're just gonna go with it. So we're gonna put this here. They say that you should put dyes like this a little bit on a diagonal, guys, so that it goes through with all, all the pressure um, under at one time. Okay. So let's, if I do Bommy Blue though, my strip behind there is gonna get lost, but we can always change that up too. All right, let's see now what this looks like. So we're gonna put this here. Okay. I like the balmy blue and the white, but I want them reversed. I can definitely sponge the edge of the b birthday. All right, it's okay, but it's still not like, it's not exactly what I'm thinking. So we can make one more change, you guys. And we're gonna, this is where we're at the eye doctor. And we are going to tell you if you like option A better or option B better, okay? So give me one moment while I pull together your eye exam for you and you can tell me we're going to switcheroo these around and see once then what you like better so i need a few seconds here to die cut this guy we're going to make white be the outer edge and we're going to make the balmy blue okay so there's that this is like creating on the fly. <laughs> I so don't do this often. Well, once a month. <laughs> All right. Especially in front of a camera. <laughs> don't forget the dimensions on the center of your deckled piece. Don't forget to put the dimensions on the center. D yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, you want me to pop that up is what you're saying in the middle. Yes, yes, yes. We definitely need to do that. Okay. So you guys, this is what I need you to tell me. This is going to be option A currently here, right? I think I'm gonna sponge the edges of the birthday blooms to you. But we've got option A, or I haven't even seen it yet, but I'm curious. Oh, maybe I don't like the white like that either though. Hmm. So then we're gonna put this stuff all. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know if I like that any better. Hmm. I actually think I would, I don't know. You guys tell me. That was option B. So B is the white edge. And then that actually makes me feel like I like, I shouldn't tell you what I'm thinking, but I actually kind of like, that seems more, so that was option A, was a little bit more cohesive. I think that got spread out too much. Okay, so, um, or could you triple mat it, is what Gwen is saying, could you triple mat it? So what's happening is this is gonna get popped up and then this is gonna fold in and then basically it looks like that. I, oh man, I should wait for your guys' answers. Um, what I'm gonna do while I wait is we're gonna prep 
this guy. We talked about sponging. So Gwen mentioned sponging the edge of the inner white mat. Um, so let's grab a dauber and let's, let's do it in balmy blue though, because balmy blue is the same color as the um, outer edge. So you guys are all voting for A, holy Moses. A, A it is. Okay, we are going to, let's see here, sponge this as well. We'll sponge this. So I have a hard time with matting, like using white things for matting. They, I love to soften the edges, just like you guys were suggesting with sponging this. It just brings it in and makes it more cohesive. So then this would be onto here. So it softens those edges. And I'm maybe not going to sponge the edges of that. We're gonna leave that be for right now. White, blue, then white as, um, yeah, I wondered about doing a triple layer, Gwen. I think that if I have one more layer back here, oh, that already is the biggest one. And then there's one more that it's almost too big. It covers up, it'll cover up a lot of the DSP. I think we're gonna go, we're gonna go with this. You guys are back with A, maybe sponge the edge of the balmy blue with Night of Navy, oh. Okay, I could see that. Let's let's give that a whirl. <laughs> um, da -da -da, Night Navy. I gotta go get Night Navy. I've got a couple classes here in the mix, and so my ink pads are kind of sporadically all over. This pulls in the night of Nate. We're just going right over the balmy blue, you guys. And now I've got like a balmy blue night of Navy. This is a one of a kind card, you guys. <laughs> all right. I, I think that'll be good. Oh, yes. That will be Venus. Venus. All right. Use a darker blue in back. Um, Oh, what if we sponge the edges of this one, though? Hee hee hee. Green giant. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Let's just sponge the edges of this because it'll give it the impression that there is a darker edge to it, which make make it pop as well. Okay. Sponging and navy. Use a darker blue and back there, you guys. We kind of got it all together. All right, let's all go to A and W because the food's as good as the root beer. So we got this. We are going to, I'm going to leave the white not sponged around the edge because we've got a lot of the other sponged. This one is going to, now, so you guys, this is a, a note for next week when we do this class. Um, we've got like this, like that. And then this little guy is coming out over here, just a little bit. And then we need to use more tear and tape. It was like a unanimous, like pretty much unanimous to use option A, you guys. All right, we're gonna pull in some greenery and the ribbon is going to be the Lost Lagoon one here. So we're going to, this is my top here. So we're gonna, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Hang on, we need more tear and tape. This comes out up this top edge over here, actually. So we've got a little loop coming out over here and then a tail. And we're gonna just trim that slightly. And then we're going to, I didn't have waiting in the wings, you guys. Normally I do that. So let's have that ready. So this guy goes here and then the other one's coming out on the other side. So we're going to go and do a tail here. So we're gonna do a loop here like this. And then if you know me by now, you guys know I love to do loops and tails. And then the tail can come right there. Okay, I've got my waiting in the wings right there. Okay, so we're building that. And then now we're using these two pieces. So we're gonna pop this guy up with some dimensionals. And then Sherry also did say 
that we need to pop up this middle back part, this middle section here. So how I'm gonna know how to do this, I'm gonna center that, and then I'm gonna put a little line of these baby dimensionals are perfect, the little minis. Okay, let's pick those off. And then this is going to get centered right in the middle here. Catch those. And then we're popping this one up. And then that goes right in the middle here. And then I'm gonna use tear and tape to attach. So this will go through the middle section. And this is where my foliage pieces are gonna go. And I'm gonna kind of set them, but not push them yet. I'm gonna just set them where I think they need to go and then I'm gonna hover this over and make sure that they're in the, a good spot. So this one is gonna to need to come out, right, like that maybe. Okay, so that's where that one's gonna go. And then this one, I should have put the tape on the back. Hang on, let's pick this off. Now he's stuck on there. And then we'll pick this one off. And then he's going to get stuck Gonna go in the right way. Like that. And then we're gonna pop all that up. <laughs> pop away. And okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> all right. Now I grabbed the butterflies. They're gold. This card uses iridescent rhinestones. It kind of pulls out the pinkies. But let's just use the gold butterflies because we can. They might stand out on the card a little bit better. We'll put one over there. Oh, I got a loosey goosey ones here. Let's use these guys. So we'll put one over here. And we'll put one right on, oops, these upsies. Let's go like that. Okay. Whew. All right. We're not done. <laughs> we have the back to do yet. Okay. But that's kind of what we got for the front, you guys. And then this opens up like that. Okay. And then <laughs> we didn't do the back yet. Hang on. So. Whew, um, I'm liking this concept of, yes, Sherry did a great job. You guys give Sherry a round of applause for this layout. It's a cool one. I've always, so I, it's like a flying finch card to me. I've always wanted to do one. It might not be the exact way that Susan Campfield or Camp, yeah, Campfield does her flying finch, but that's what it looks like to me. So I'm going to sponge my edges here of both of these layers and then we're gonna glue them in the back with our balmy blue piece. And let's see if a sentiment, birthday blooms for you. I had an idea for the sentiment, but I don't think it's gonna work. I was gonna to try to, so we're gonna put this guy here, because that's the bottom corner. We got that one here. And I do need a sentiment though. And it's gonna to have to be super duper baby small, um, but shorty. Little shorty doo wop, um, or not? Okay, uh, but you, if you're gonna stamp a sentiment, you're gonna want to stamp it now before it's glued down. Because if you stamp it um, after the fact, it's gonna be bumpily underneath here. So um, let's see if I give me, you guys. Let me give me thirty seconds. I'm just gonna go see if I can find a short sentiment really quick. Ha. I found bottled happiness and it says sending cheer and that's so widow and perfect. Let's get this off and we're going to do this guy. These guys, this one we're just going to do really quick sending cheer. And then you could always write your little love note and 
Let's glue these down, this down, this down. Whew, Sherry, this was a card workout. <laughs> Made me sweat a little bit, which is good. It's always good to do that a little bit when you get the nerves worked up. Hopefully, um, you weren't more nervous than me. Hopefully, you could sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> and hopefully, and I appreciate the the um, insight that you gave, too, and the answers that you had for me. I, I really do appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, you, you could have seen my face when I was trying to figure out the flapping and the folding. You could do the happy birthday from Zany Zoo. Oh, you're so correct. Oh my gosh. Um, Karen, that is a perfect idea. Sending cheer. That's not glued down yet. We can make this. Watch this, you guys. We're going to make that happen. We're going to give that a second. Zany Zoo is what Karen suggested. So... We are gonna do that as well. So let's grab the happy bird. So you guys, there is a little bit of glue going on underneath there, but it wasn't quite there. I let it dry for a hot second. And we're going to, now, stamping it straight is the next thing. So we're gonna put, okay. Good deal, good job. Teamwork makes the dream work, you guys. All right, now put a little more glue. <laughs> Come back there. <laughs> well, hopefully you're not nervous now, Sherry. <laughs> All right, so this guy, we've got birthday blooms for you. It opens up like that. Okay, very nice, very nice. And then back here, we've got sending cheer and happy birthday to you. Now, I would have preferred the happy birthday to you over here, but... Because only because the fonts don't necessarily match. It's okay though, you guys. This is my sample card. So, oh, and I noticed there's a score line on that piece right there, but that's okay. So the font is different than that, which is different than that. But that font goes with that font a little bit. But I like the idea of having the happy birthday on here. Oh, and now you guys can see, like this was the original layout that I was like looking at in terms of color concept, right? And then we use Sherry's recipe for the layout, but. You can see how you can tweak things like so that's what's really cool about taking classes is you get ideas of color combinations and things that go together um so just know that that class is next week that i kept talking about we're almost done with that you guys i have to rip off half of that <laughs> um okay so are you guys ready to see sherry's card oh my goodness are you ready are you excited you guys <laughs> to see what she made okay i have it here so here's the recipe you guys again i'll photograph this this will get photographed and um, I'm going to photograph Sherry's card as well. And let's see here. All right. You guys ready? Here it is. Okay. Here's the back. She decorated it very nice. Okay, here it is. Look at this masterpiece, you guys, using fresh as a daisy. I love it. I was very, like, that blue paper where it's the... Um, white flowers on the bottom and blue on the top so she used her pretty flowers on the bottom um wishing you the brightest birthday sherry i love what you did with this ribbon the loop the loop the tail and the loop the loop the tail i love it she took the label and split it in half and made a blue bottom she added her little gems from fresh as a daisy here's her concept of the dsp so she used dsp on the inside and a deco rectangle on the outside and then she cut some of the flowers from the dsp and when you oh oh okay i see okay so this is where she used this makes a lot of sense okay so she so i knew when the card was shut i needed to have designer paper here which i hadn't done and when she and she used designer paper here in the middle the blue so the blue is part of like the top part of that paper and when you open it up She's got the white panels, so it's not overly intensive with designer series paper. And then she's got her DSP here on the inside. So when this card is open and like up, like it stands up like, like this, right? Super cool. And she stamped those little daisies in like these two, oh, two inner corners, the two outer corners. And then she did the same back here. And so her back is really pretty like that too. So cool. Okay. And I say I got kind of the same concept going with my back. Very cool. And then mine's intense with designer series paper. I wonder what mine would have looked like had this been white and white. And then 
um, just stamping softly the edges. So, but no wrong way, right, you guys? So great card share. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Look at that, you guys. So if you have that fresh as a daisy, take note of your color combinations here for this one. And so very cool, you guys. Okay, well, I think that was a successful share, create, inspire. So now what we want you to do, Sherry and I want to challenge you to make a card using her um, instructions, um, her measurements. Um, what I would do here is I will put here. So if you, I did mine at three, five and three sixteenths and Sherry did hers at five and a quarter possibly. So, but we're just going to put here or five and three sixteenths. So we could do one or the other. Um, the other thing is here, that little strip here, um, it should be, it could be cardstock or DSP was three sixteenths by five and, oh, what was it? Oh, you know what it should be? It should be, so my little strip is off by a hair. It should be three eighths by five and three eighths um, times two. That was the little strip here. And I can definitely see now that mine could have been a 16th wider. Hers is a little wider. Okay. So other than that, um, hopefully everything else makes sense. Yeah, I definitely could have had a little bit wider of a balmy blue back there, but that works. And then Sherry too, having that little blue, if you, that blue DSP, um, I could cut a strip of that and put that right in the middle. That would be off the edge, over the top too. Okay. Whew. I need to cl clean up on aisle nine here, you guys. I got like a little bit of a hot mess going on. So, all right, we did it. So um, I was going to take my camera off and show you guys all the card kitting that we got done yesterday. If you want to see some action here in the hive, I would definitely um, take the camera off if you want to see. Um, let me put this away and put my drawer in though so I don't knock into it. Um, we kitted up ink, paper, scissors yesterday. We kitted up the Technique Club class and we did uh, la, 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 the Sweet Textured Floral class. So you guys, we got them all to the point where everything's laid out and now the next steps are to... Um, put everybody's slips on, and then we get everything ready for mailing. <laughs> so, all right, you guys want to go on a little tour of the hive? Are you ready for it? <laughs> so let's unplug here, and we're going to get this off, and we're going to flip the camera around. You guys, if you get motion sickness, don't... Oh, that's my paper pumpkin pile up. Don't judge. Um, okay, so um, we got piles here of this is what people have been waiting for since last week because I, I got to the point where I, I can't do shipping every day you guys it cuts out it takes time to get the printer set up so I do shipping like once a week now all the game night prizes are over there that I have to mail out um, and then this is all the textured floral so no names on um, yet this is all the textured floral there's 60 card kits right there and I think I have about 15 of those left and that is this class again we just showed those pictures so that is, that is the, so these cards right here, right? Those are the textured floral. And then what I have over on the other side here, this is really hard to see this. This is ink, paper, scissors, you guys, that's coming up in a couple weeks on the 24th, in person on the 28th, those cards. So those are over, I'm gonna flip kind of flat here. That's, we got these all laid out. So there's 72 card kits between that pile over there and that pile over there, okay? And then what we had over here, there's 26 card sets here. This is roses that I do with Rose, the Technique Club class. Um, so there's one left. So all of these are gone except for one is left. It would be to anybody, it's the where you do a $50 order. And then in case you're wondering what all the boxes are. So I have a pile here. These are like my pile of um, past classes. The penguins are going to Vicki Helms though. So Vicki... Just got my last um, game night penguin class. So Vicki, if you're watching, that one's yours. I have that for you. And then in, the other thing too I do, you guys, every card class that I ever do, I save the one set of the cards, like my master set. And I keep them in boxes like this. And so like these are like all the past monthly classes from like this was last June and then last July and then it was August. And this was September, October, November, December. And then like these were mystery nights from last year. So I keep like all my monthly cards. I keep sweet classes. I keep ink, paper, scissors, the whole series of classes in these boxes. And like this was the box class that we did. 
Um, I keep all these and I take them upstairs at the end of a catalog. And then I, and when I'm looking for ideas, I'm like mystery, not mystery. I have creative roadblock. I come and I start looking through these boxes and I just get inspiration. <laughs> so, so I look and I, I go back, I'm like, oh, I love that color pattern. Or I like that layout. Like this one to me is always a classic layout, you guys, for a card. So, um, yeah, so that's what these boxes are all about. And then what else can I share? Um, let's see. My boards are empty over here. You can see those are the swap boards that usually are there. Those are full. The reason they're empty is because we have it on the docket, you guys. I have here on the back corner, I have swaps right here. So I have, these are from my team swap. And these are from an annual catalog launch swap that I did. I have to make a moment to put a like time on the calendar to show you guys all these swap cards. That is on the docket. Um, it's on the docket. It needs to be on the docket. And then once those, I go through them with you, then I um, share them. Veronica, there's your June paper pumpkin, in case you're wondering. Um, so then I put them up on the board. Um, and then I think that's about it that I can share with you guys. So let's go back to the, this is where you guys, this is where the live studio area is here in case you are wondering. So let's flip this back. So, okay, well, there's your little tour of the hive. <laughs> so let's put that back. Do we have any questions? It's like a reverse mystery night. <laughs> yes, exactly, Lillian Johnson. And that's exactly what I say it is. It's a reverse mystery night. All right, so you guys, this has been fun. Even though you, Sherry made me sweat a little bit, <laughs> it was it was fun. Like I. I enjoy this. It, it gets me out of my comfort zone. So um, I'll be honest with you, like the whole creating on the fly is not normally what we do for classes. Normally, I know exactly what I'm doing. I could do it in my sleep with making and um, putting cards together with you guys to show you how to do it. And so this is a, like a reverse reverse for me. So it's good though. It's good. It needs to keeps me on my toes. Um, <laughs> all right. So the other thing too, I wanted to tell you guys is all the scavenger hunts have been graded. I'm very happy to report that out. Um, they, I, there was the most that were ever done, um, got turned in, and um, the most that ever I got them where I got them in a folder somewhere here. Um, they're in a folder around me. Um, I'm gonna do a special. Um, hi, Denise Crabtree. Um, I'm gonna do a special uh, little a YouTube live going over the scavenger hunt answers with you. Um, I'm gonna try to sneak that in this week too. So there's lots of sneaking things in you guys. Um, and we also gotta get the kit class scheduled as well. So definitely, yes, Gwen, it was a busy day in the hive. I'm afraid to call my mom and ask her how her feet feel because she's the guy here at 10 o'clock yesterday or slightly before 10 my time and we worked until five. Um, kidding up 753 cards yesterday. So, uh, oh yes, Gwen, I do create on the fly at Craft Roulette. And then and that, that is true. That is very true. Um, and, and that's right. I only do that like a few times a year as well. I was going to be doing Craft Roulette in August, um, I think on the 4th, but I asked um, teacher, teacher Mary Gunn for um a vacation slip. Um, our friends and Tyler, we wanted to go up to Door County for the weekend and we wanted to leave Friday night. And so I asked Mary and she's like, just take the night off. We'll find somebody else. So I'm the next time I'm on the docket for craft roulette now is I think the second Friday or the first Friday, first Friday, maybe in December, it could be the second Friday. So maybe the second Friday in December, I think I'm on the docket. So, um, you do great on the fly with this. I try. <laughs> I try to make it fun, right? And we go, we learn as we go. Um, but yeah, you guys, busy day in the hive. So again, if, if since Friday, it's been a little bit hectic with prepping for classes and spending some time with Tyler. Um, actually, too, we, I met um, with one of my team members, Laura Sullivan, on Sunday down in Chicago. Um, you guys, we have our big used stamp sale next week, Friday, a week and a half. And Laura had... Um, a bunch of boxes that she was looking to, to try to sell. So um, we dual purpose and Tyler and I went and had a, a, um, a little excursion down to Chicago and met up with Laura and got her boxes and it was her birthday on Saturday. So we could have a little birthday lunch with her. And so it was a busy weekend. Um, it was fun. It was busy, but I didn't go on emails very much between Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then with kidding up like the last two days, I am backed up on emails. It just happens like that once every um, week, it seems like I get a little backed up, but today's the day I'm going to work on getting everything situated. And then tomorrow is a shipping day for us. And so I'm going to get through everything so that I know what needs to get shipped out by tomorrow. So, all right. Um, 
Yeah. So good job, Sherry Everett. Round of applause to you. Um, um, Barb, Becky Gandolfo, um, give me at least 15 or so minutes after I end the live and then you can give me a call and we'll go over anything you want to. Um, I have class again at one though. So in an hour and a half, you guys, um, Becky, I have class. <laughs> so you, you got a window there, an hour. Um, but definitely give me a call. Um, and I think that might be it, you guys. Um, I... I think I'll be live, you know, I don't think, I will, I know I'll be live for class tomorrow night at six. We have the monthly cards to do together. And um, yeah, I don't know, it's been good. So you guys, I really enjoyed this. It was good. I hope that you guys have some inspiration now and some creative thoughts to flow in your head that if you need to get a card made for somebody, um, take a photograph of it, of it and make sure you share it. Um, in the event on Facebook, so not YouTube, but in the event on my Facebook page, um, I will create a post here momentarily um, that says share your creations here. And you have till next week, Thursday, Wednesday, like Wednesday midnight. Um, we'll pull the names on Thursday morning and we'll do the drawing to see who wins a prize with me for sharing your card. So, okay. I'm looking around. Did I forget anything? I always think I forget things, you guys. And that's why I always ask you, what did I forget? <laughs> so, um, all right, you guys. I think I'll let you go then. So lots of sunshine, love, and big hugs, you guys. Enjoy your Wednesday. Happy hump day. <laughs> make it a good rest of your day and rest of your week. If I don't catch you in between now and then, um, make something crafty. Yay. Love you a long time. I'm going to count to 10 just in case it ends early. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, 